Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all honor, glory, and praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, HaRakah Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the hopefully elect. All right, and this is just going to be a quick correction video, okay? And uh, I'm going to go ahead and play the clip and um, uh, correct myself here. Out, didn't Jacob stretch out his hand first? But what I'm trying to say, withdraw, he said because, of, because of nothing good or bad that he either have. So basically, uh, there was so much stuff going on before the cop came up, you know, that um, and this was the last, this is the, the last 30 minutes of camp, you know, so I, you know, whatever the reason was, I was thinking about another scenario and um, thinking about how through the spirit, you know, Jacob was, you know, ended up receiving the uh the inheritance of the firstborn you know but i mentioned the situation about um of one of the babies and you know that was a set of twins reaching out his hand first and then pulling pulling his hand back in and uh so i just want to correct you know what i was actually talking about so this is genesis chapter 38 okay um and um i'll start it um verse 16 so basically this is going into um what was her name tamar okay this is going into the to the stepdaughter of judah which her name was tamar matter of fact let me see we can go uh we could re you know we could read the story a little bit genesis 38 okay and verse one and it came to pass at that time that judah went down from his brethren and turned in, turned into a certain Adulamite whose name was Hara. And Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite whose name was Shua, and he took her and went in unto her. And she conceived and bare a son, and he called his name Ur. And she conceived again and bare a son, and she called his name Onan. And she yet again conceived and bare a son and called his name Shelah. And he was at uh, Chezib when she bare him. And Judah took a wife for Er, his firstborn, whose name was Tamar. Okay. And Er, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of Yahweh, and the Lord slew him. And Judah said unto Onan, Go in unto thy brother's wife and marry her, and raise up seed to thy brother. And Onan knew that the seed should not be his. And it came to pass, when he went in unto his brother's wife, that he spilled it on the ground, lest that he should give seed to his brother. And the thing which he did displeased the, the Most High, wherefore he slew him. Also, so they both did wickedly. Continuing on. Then said Judah to Tamar, his daughter-in-law, Remain a widow at thy father's house, house till Shalah, my son, be grown. For he said, Lest peradventure he die also, as his brethren did. And Tamar went and dwelt in her father's house. And in process of time, the daughter of Shua, Judah's wife, died. Okay. And Judah was comforted, and went up unto his sheep shearers to Timnath, he and his friend Harah the Adulamite. And it was told Tamar, saying, Behold, thy father in law goeth up to Tinmath to shear his sheep. And she put her widow's garments off from her, and covered her with a veil, and wrapped herself, and sat in an open place, which is by the way to Timnath, for she saw that Shelah was grown, and she was not given, and she was not given unto him to wife. So Judah you know, Judah was slacking on his promise, you know, the son the son had grown, she was being a widow, you know. Re re refraining from doing different things, you know, sleeping with other men and waiting on her husband to be given to her, but it never happened, you know, or waiting to be given to her husband and it never happened. So this is what, you know, this is the story, verse 15. When Judah saw her, he thought her to be in harlot because she had covered her face and he turned unto her by the way and said, go to, I pray thee, let me come in unto thee. For he knew not that she was his daughter-in-law and she said, what wilt thou give me that thou may, mayest come in unto me? And he said, I will send thee a kid from the flock. And she said, Wilt thou give me a pledge till thou send it? And he said, What pledge shall I give thee? And she said, Thy signet and thy bracelets and thy staff that is in thine hand. And he gave it to her and came in unto her, and she conceived by him. And she arose and went away and laid by her veil, and laid by her veil from her. And she put on the garments of her widowhood. And Judah sent the kid by the hand of his friend, the Adulamite, to receive his pledge from the woman's hand, but he found her not. Then he asked the men of that place, saying, Where is the harlot that was openly by the wayside? And they said, There was no harlot in this place. And he returned to Judah and said, I cannot find her. And also the men of the place said that there was no harlot in this place. And Judah said, Let her take it to her. 
lest we be shamed. Behold, I sent this kid, and thou hast not found her. And it came to pass about three months after that it was told to Judah, saying, Tomorrow thy daughter-in-law hath played the harlot, and also, behold, she is with child by whoredom. And Judah said, Bring her forth, and let her be burnt. When she was brought forth, she sent to her father-in-law, saying, By the man whose these are, I am, with, am I with child? And she said, Discern, I pray thee, whose are these, the signet and bracelets and staff? And Judah acknowledged them and said, She hath been more righteous than I, because that I, have gave, because that I gave her not to Shalah my son, and he knew her again no more. So he didn't sleep with her again after that anymore. Because that's not that's not what you're supposed to do, you know. She she got him she did that through uh through trickery. So, you know. He didn't want to continue to break the law. Verse twenty seven, and it came to pass in the time of her travail that behold twins were in her womb. So this is why I was confused, because she also had twins and you know <laughs> there was a lot going on, you know, and I slipped up a couple of times that day, you know, some very minor slips, you know, but you know, they were slips none the least. Oh man, there's so many edification videos that can come out on correcting all the foolishness that went on, you know, during the, during the camp this past Saturday, man. You know, Lord willing, I get to all of them. There's enough. There's enough stuff to correct on there, man. That I'll be making videos <laughs> forever. But that's what we do, man. We're here to do this work. Anyway, let me go ahead and uh. And it came to pass when she travailed that the one put out his hand. And the midwife took and bound upon his hand a scarlet thread, saying, This came out first. And it came to pass, as he drew back his hand, that, behold, his brother came out. And she said, How hast thou broken forth? This breach be upon thee. Therefore his name was called Phares. Okay. And afterward came out his brother that had the scarlet thread upon his hand. His name was called Zerah. So that's why I said at the beginning, you know, let's hear it again. Stretched out. Didn't Jacob stretch out his hand first? But what I'm trying to say, withdraw, he said because of, because of nothing good or bad that he either have done, right? I'm choosing. So you know, like I said, like I said, that was a mistake. Salakia, so you know, uh, you know, as, as we know the scriptures, you know. Excuse me. Uh, matter of fact, I said, who was he that have not? You know. Yeah, I don't like I don't like that one either. Uh I mean well I ain't gonna say I don't like that one, but yeah, it is, you know, it is a bad mistake, you know. Ecclesiastes twenty and eighteen to slip upon the pavement is better than to slip with the tongue, so the fall of the wicked shall come uh speedily. You know. Okay. The brother's asking me a question. Hold on real quick. Let me go ahead and do this last precept. Who have not been? Ecclesiastes is nineteen and uh, verse sixteen. There is one that slippeth in his speech, but not from his heart. And who is he that have not offended with his tongue? You know, so Salakia, so like if any, if I offended any of the little ones, if I must, you know, mistook, you know, threw anybody off or anything like that, Salakia. So you know, but with that, you know, I want to give all honor, glory, and praise to you, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai Bashim, Yahweh Kakwadash, double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone, these blessings and salutations to the hopefully elect. That I'm gonna say Shalom.